Welcome back. In this video, we're going to have a look at a more complicated routed network. Having a two networks joined by one router is not very realistic. And usually what we'd have is we'd have several routers in between. And in the case of the internet, we'd have an enormous number of routers between. In a visit to a typical website, your packet will probably hop over between 10 and 30 different routers. So it is a lot. Now, we can see what the arrangement would be with just these three routers here. So we've got two network PCs over here and they can access servers at either Google or Microsoft. Now, if you uh, have a look here, you can see that actually there are different ways that the packets can go. Now, in Phileas, we are, I believe, restricted to having definite routes. In reality, on the Internet, the routes adjust themselves according to how much traffic and whether routes go down or not. But let's have a look how this works. I've just got these connected. And as you can see, I've still got on this side my uh, 192.168 network. I've got the Google network, which is on the 8.8.8 .8 network and then the Microsoft network, which is on 666, okay? So uh, essentially, all we have to do is we have to get the packets to go in the right direction. So I've put these routers together, and you can see this router here has three network interface cards, NICs. And if you have a look, this here, is the route that goes onto our 192.168 network and it has got that IP address set up on it. I've then got two other networks. I've got the 10.10.10 .10 network and the 10.10.11 network. The 10.10.10 .10 goes this way and the 10.10.11 goes that way. If we have a look at the next router along, then we've got something uh, very similar. You've got the uh, route out to Google servers, and then you have got a route back, the 10.10.11. You'll notice the IP on this, this is 10.10.11.2, and this is 10.10.11.1. So essentially you've got like a little mini network between each of these routers. And you've got exactly the same thing here on this router, which goes out onto Microsoft's network. Now, if we uh, run this, it should all work just fine. And I have a look at my notebook. Oh, I've already got it on the Google page. So let's go to the Microsoft page first. So that is at 6.6.6.100. Can't think why I chose that number. And you can see it loads Microsoft's site there. And if I go onto this one, 8.8.8.8, .8 it appears we go to Google site. And you can see the transfers happening in the background. If you want to see more detail, you can do a really cool thing in Phileas where, for example, on any computer or router, you can right click and you can show the data exchanges, which look just like this. And when we start getting into packets, we'll be able to uh, have a look into these and see exactly what is going on. But these are the individual packets going back and forth. So that's all fine. The question is, how do these routers actually work? So if I uh, go into our edit mode again and have a look at this router, you can see it's got the automatic routing box ticked and what that means is essentially Phileas is just going to decide for you and you don't care. But we are interested in knowing what that means. So when I untick that box, the forwarding table uh, appears. And if we have a look down at the bottom, the forwarding table is made up of rules. So if I get a packet for this IP destination, uh, matching this net mask so if it's going to this means everything counts so if this is going strictly to 10.10.11.2 then the next gateway is the home address as in this machine uh, and you use it on this network card to so the home address so it goes actually to the router if I have a look down here if I have a packet that comes in for 10.10.10.1, .10 .10 
then again I send it to this router because that is an interface on this router you can see that here now if I get something that's in 10.10.10 .10 but you can see from the subnet mask that the last triple isn't checked then actually we're going to forward it on to 10.10.10.1 so essentially what you've got a rule as a rule is that if you get a packet for a particular uh, network then output it on one of these networks and the rules tells you where to put it next now I've put in a couple of manual rules down here so I've said on this router here if I get anything for uh, the network beginning with eight, which is gonna be this network over here, and you can see I'm only checking the first th uh, number here, then I want to forward it on to 10.10.11.1, .10 which is this router here. And I'm gonna use 10.10.11.2, .10 which is my network card on this router here, to do it. So it's gonna forward this packet from here to here and that router will then know what to do uh, I'm going to delete that one don't think I need that one and when I run this what we'll see is uh, when I try and go to the website so I'm going to try and go to this website here uh, it goes back and forth just fine because now it knows to if you get a packet that is for this one to forward it on now let's try taking that rule out so if I delete that entry like so and then run it and then uh, let's start on that again you can see there's an error at the router because it doesn't know how to get to 8.8.8.8 .8 and this is when you run a ping where you sometimes get host unreachable because a router reports an error saying it doesn't know how to get there if you wanted to set all this up so for example so that things always go clockwise around this ring you could set up forwarding rules to say that anything that is for uh, 8.8 .8 or 666 goes this way and then here anything that is for 666 or 192 goes this way and here anything that goes from uh, for uh, 192 or 8.8 .8 goes this way and that way you'll get packets circulating around and when it goes across like this it will come back and go this way around I'm just going to pause a second and set that up okay uh, if you have a look down at my clock you can see it's taking me way longer than I thought to get all that sorted out uh, this is complex in terms of getting all of the numbers right so what I have done I'm going to go through the settings of each one before we have a look we have got router one and you can see down at the bottom here you've got our rules so for the 8 dot network and for the 6 dot network it forwards on to the next gateway and it does so over this network interface card so the uh, dot 11 uh, so the 11 dot rather network interface card is this one we can double check by clicking here yes it is and it's forwarding to 10.10.11.1 which is this network interface card here if we have a look at our next router this one is forward everything from the 6 network and for the 192 network over this NIC towards this router and this one forwards everything for the 192 network and the 8 network this way up towards this router so we've got these routes established in this table this is just pretty much how routers work there's a few more settings you can tweak to uh, get the rules working and you can set priorities against rules and this kind of thing but essentially it's just the same as this, this telling you where the next packet should go and on which next interface network interface card if i now go into the run mode we can see that if i go into my notebook here and if i load up my web browser and i go to 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8, then you're going to see that the communication goes round the top 
but when it comes back in because I've set up the routing tables it's going to go this way instead so there we are and back round it goes and uh, similarly if I put in uh, 6.6.6.100 uh, it's going to come around here down to here and when it replies it will come back up this way so there we are and we can see that works as well now it's not just this way going around if I load up a server here uh, I have a web browser on the server and I've just got the local page there 127.0.0.1 if I put in 8.8.8.8 .8 that will then go around the route in exactly the same way so you can kind of get an idea about how many how many routers connect together using the rules in the uh, routing table uh, can set up uh, where packets are redirected that is more than enough for this time in future videos we are going to have a look at both how firewalls work and also uh, how DNS works so looking forward to that